Hey Neppers, it's me, Wild Neptune, here at you, bringing you a video for Epic 7 about a Moonlight Hero about to come out very soon, like today, Solitaria of the Snow, and should you spend your Mystic Medals on her? I'm here to answer those questions, and to get more answers to your Epic 7 needs, be sure to follow me at Twitch, at twitch.tv slash wildneptune, and leave a like and subscribe down below. Anyway, let's get into it right now. See our uh, little intro animation right here. Uh, by the way, uh, she's ML uh, Etta. So Etta is her uh, imprint. And here we go. Okay, lore, lore, lore. We, 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 we want to get to uh, stats. Alrighty. Um... So, Light Mage, I believe this is Emma Ball's imprint, I I think. So, if I'm correct there, if you have an Emma Ball, you can, you know, shift gear onto him to see how well he can build her. Effectiveness imprint, health release, um, okay attack, meh health, pretty good speed for a mage, uh, good defense, you know, base crit, chance crit damage on here. Um, so yeah, pretty good stats overall. And this is the key skill she has, her S2. It's a passive. You can tell it's a passive because you don't get any souls from it right here. Um, what it does is called I Want to Go Home. Decreases the amount of focus gained by the enemy by 100%. When the caster is buffed at the start of the turn, has a 70% chance, max 100% with molars, to grant Daydream for one turn. And what Daydream does is, when attacking, inflicts a random debuff on the target for one turn. Daydream, with, with a T some, for some reason, cannot be dispelled. Decreases attack, decrease hit chance, decrease speed, or cannot be buffed. Um, so basically a Sierra Ren, kind of. Um, this is pretty good. So first of all, the cat she does have to be buffed, right? Which I think is the condition that is going to be easier to be grant, you know, to be granted on. With some heroes, like ML Crow, obviously, with the multi turn immunity, you know, things like FCC barrier, um, I guess G Perk's attack buff too, could be a could be a thing. So there are a lot of ways to get buffed, but again, there are a lot of ways to be stripped of those buffs that are in the meta right now. But that's kind of a secondary effect. the The big one is the focus gain, um. Because it passively stops focus gain. And the three, I think, big targets for this is SSB, obviously. So that means SSB no longer gets stacks. Um, then the Violet also uses focus. So if, you know, he, he, like, he, like he needed any more counters right now. But rip, rip Remnant Violet. And uh, Arch Demon Shadow. Also, I believe uses focus. So, and those are three units that really rely on their focus bar to uh, do what they want to do. So, really big counter, I believe. It, it, it's not a counter, just like a really good check to those units. I think also that um, I'm not sure if. Designed a little bit, uses focus, or she uses fighting spirit. Let me let me check here. Oh, she uses fighting spirit. Okay, so it doesn't work against her. Uh just you know, in, in case you were wondering, fighting spirit is different than focus. So you just like I just checked. Emma Lilibet, um Ravi, uh Landy, like they, they don't care about a passive, right? 
So. Alright, but his skill 3 is called Boom Starlight Fall. And what it does, it decreases the enemy's buff duration by one turn before, before, so remember it's before, attacking with a Starlight Stunning for one turn before decreasing CR by 30% and it grants the caster Stealth for a turn. So it's on a 4 turn, um, lowest 3 turn cooldown with the Molas. And for 20 souls, it extends the stealth for um, a turn and grants an extra turn, which is, uh, it could be okay, right? So how good this is really depends on what the S1 is. Um, it does mean you can cycle the, um, the stun. Right? A little bit... A little bit more. Right? Um... So see it here. Right? So she uses her, so use her S3. Right? No, actually no, that was her S1. Hold on, wait. Who did she hit? Wait, hold on, let's, let's go back. She uses her S3. Okay. And... It seemed like that was... An AoE. Right? Yeah, def yeah it definitely was an AoE. Um, it didn't actually say... All enemies on... Um... On here. Right? So like, I actually wasn't sure it was AoE or not, but it does seem to be an AoE, which is really good. So it's an AoE sun with stealth. And the extra turn with the um, stealth on it means that the stealth counts as a buff, right? So you will have um, the daydream active if you do burn it for the extra turn. The S1, um, it also it also has a chance to stun, twenty five percent AOE, which is pretty good. Uh, it attacks all enemies on her turn, so it's like Dizzy's only, not quite as good, right? So this is SSP. See here, she gains no focus because of uh, wow. Even the um, Epic Seven official has the DJ army. But, um, she seems like a pretty decent, um, hero for those focus units. Okay, I'll be honest, it's hard to gauge how she'll be. She's very niche in her applications as far as if you had the polar. If you're just like fringe masters, even challenger. I don't know if she's worth pulling for. Um, the unit she so like two of the unit she counters in Ammo Violet and SSB. They already have a lot of a lot of counters, right? Like you know, Ammo Violet. You know, you have like. Checks like Briseria, um, Archdemon Shadow, uh, just, just hitting him works very well. And with SSB, you obviously have like Rowana, um, Landy, you know, his grass, right? Um, you know, stuff like, even but stuff like Bizarre running around kind of hurts her a little bit, but... ADS herself, you know, also has like Rowana, stuff like Stella Harpa, um, other counters like that. But I think for players who are trying to push, you know, higher in the champion or legend, might find some usage 
out of her. But if, you, if you're at that level, I think you've decided for yourself whether or not she's worth it for you. But I would say for her, wait and see. Um, she has potential, right? Like any character that has an AoE stun and a strong passive like she has, is always is always worth thinking about. Um, people didn't think that Archie and, that, um, Archie and Shadow was going to be a good unit at first. But I said that, hey, this unit is going to be it's going to be good because a unit with a like a unique skill and passive that is that strong is going to see play, and she does right. Um, she is uh, ADS, one of the biggest snowball heroes in PvP right now, right? And Solitaria, well, I don't think she's trying to be a snowball hero. She might be something that stops um, those focus heroes enough where in high level drafts, you might have to consider, hey, is this person going to draft Solitaria against me and maybe Rwanda too if I draft like SSB and, you know, something else that might not be that, um, that strong against those two units, right? Because not only... Can um, Solitaria like handle the focus? Maybe she could do like a you know a little bit of damage too. Her damage didn't really seem that high on the video, but you know maybe she can like not be totally useless on offense. Also, again, had to wait and see how that pans out. But those are just my thoughts and opinions on Solitaria of the Snow. Of course. I will be pulling on her with my measly amount of mystics later on, but I'm on Neptune. It's a big good one. Nep out.